Welcome everybody to this new talk at CEO at Work 2020. I want to first start by thanking the organizers for inviting me to present some of the work that we have been doing at the Modern Math Research Center of Mathematical Modeling in Quito. Please remember that you can watch this video at your own pace. You can pause it whenever you want. You can repeat the scenes that you maybe didn't fully understand at the first time. And there will be two sessions of Q&A to allow for participation of people from different time zones. Try to join one of them. Well, now I better disappear from the screen so you can focus on the slides. In this talk, I will show you a mixed integer programming model that we have formulated within an application project for the integrated routine of posters at vehicles at the National Bureau for Statistics in Ecuador. This is joint work with all these people here. Sandra Gutierrez, Diego Recalde and Ramiro Torres are colleagues from the math department at the Escuela Politécnica Nacional and also members from the Modern Math Research Center. Andres Miniguano is a former student who is about to start his PhD abroad. And my name is Luis Miguel Torres. This is an outline of the presentation. I will start by providing a motivation for the problem and a formal definition of it. Then for the most of the talk, I will present you, as I said, uh, our mixed integer programming formulation. Towards the end, I will briefly sketch our solution algorithm and provide some computational results that we have obtained so far. And then I finally will state some conclusions. So let's start. The National Statistics Bureau of Ecuador, INEC for its Spanish name, is the public office responsible for collecting data and producing several demographic and economic indexes. Among them, the so-called consumer price index which measures the change of prices of certain commodities among time. To collect the required information, a set of stores must be visited with a regular frequency, usually once a month. These stores are visited by a set of pollsters who may interview the store owner and ask for the prices of the commodities in the case of small stores, or maybe we'll just walk among the customers and check the prices in supermarket and larger stores. Pollsters are transported to and from the stores by a fleet of vehicles, and they might also walk between the stores. The daily service schedule of a pollster always starts at the INEX main office. From there, he or she is transported by a vehicle to the first store he or she has to visit. After visiting a store, a pollster might walk to the next store in his or her schedule, or be picked up by a vehicle and transported there. At the end of the day, posters must be returned to the INEX office by vehicle. Service schedules must also comply with additional technical and legal requirements. For instance, each poster must have a lunch break within a certain time window in his or her schedule. Our problem consists in three main tasks. First, we have to schedule visits to the stores within the a given time horizon, usually two to three weeks. Then we must schedule daily service duties for the posters. And finally, we have to define daily routes for the vehicles of the fleet. Before giving a formal definition for the problem, let us look at a small example that I hope will help to illustrate the main ideas involved. Assume we have a team of two posters and two vehicles and moreover, that each vehicle has capacity equal to two, meaning it can transport the two posters at the same time. We have to visit four stores, which are shown in this graph here as nodes one to four, and each store has a busy duration associated to it. Stores one, three, and four are small stores that require one time unit to be visited, while store two is a large store that requires 17 time units to be visited. These two light, more or less light blue nodes here, stand for the INEX main office. Actually, what it is shown here is a feasible solution for our problem, consisting of 
a route for vehicle number one, which is shown by these continuous blue arcs, a route for vehicle number two, shown by these dashed orange arcs, and also this green arc depicting a walking path for the first poster from store one to store three. The arc weights correspond to the travel times or the walking times. Arcs that are not using the solution are shown as these dotted gray lines. Well, let's examine this solution in more detail. We will show here the elapsed time since the solution start. At the beginning of the solution, the first vehicle picks up the two posters and starts its route. After two time units, the vehicle is currently arriving at store two and it has delivered the first poster at store one. This poster has just finished visiting this store. Meanwhile, the second poster is about to start the visit of the second store. After five time units, poster number one has walked from store one to store three and is currently arriving there. The vehicle is on the way of traveling from, from store two to store three. And poster number two has started visiting store uh, number two. After six time units, poster number one has finished the visit of store three and is being picked up by the vehicle. Meanwhile, poster number two continues the visit of store number two. Remember, this was a large store that requires 17 time units to be visited. After 15 time units, the vehicle has arrived at the store four and delivers the poster number one there. The poster will start visiting this store while the vehicle waits for him. Meanwhile, the second poster continues the visit of store two. After 17 time units, the first vehicle returns together with the first poster to the INEX office and they finish the duty there. The second poster is about to finish the visit of store two and the second vehicle is traveling towards this store to pick up this poster. At time 19, poster number two has finished at visiting store two and is being picked up by the second vehicle and at time 20, these two arrive back at the INEX office and the schedule finishes. We have seen a, a schedule that consists of two vehicle routes and two service routes for the posters. Moreover, the service routes involve transportation by vehicles, visiting of stores, and also walking probably between stores. In our model, we deal with four different sets of entities a set E of pollsters, a set K of vehicles, a set of N stores that I will name later, and a set S representing the days within the time horizon for planning. In our previous example, we have just seen what a schedule for one of these days might look like. We also need to define a network in order to state our problem. This network will contain two nodes for each store that we will also call customer nodes. There is a set C- consisting of the nodes 1 to N, representing the arrival of a poster at a store, and a set C+, with nodes N plus 1 to 2 N, representing the departure of a poster from a store. The index office will be called the depot in our problem, and will be represented also by, by two nodes 0, for the starting of a route and 2n plus 1 where each route must finish. The set C of customers is just a union of C minus and C plus, and the set B of nodes in the network is the union of the customer nodes and the two depot nodes. The network contains three sets of weighted arcs. There is a first set AS of service arcs that connect two nodes representing the same store. That means each service arc has the form i, i plus n for each i in C minus. These arcs represent the visit of a store by a pollster. 
The weight of these arcs is the duration of the visit and is called the service time and represented by parameter t i i plus n. Then there is a second set of walking arcs, AW, that represent the situation where a pollster walks from one store to the next store in his or her schedule. So these arcs are of the form IJ, where I is a departure node from a store, J is an arrival node at the store, and these two stores must be different, of course. The weight of such an arc is the time required for the walk and will be represented by parameter Tij. Finally, there is the vehicle transportation arcs, the set AB. These contain arcs connecting all uh, customer nodes and arcs leaving from the starting depot to each customer node and also arcs returning from each customer node to the returning depot. These arcs symbolize all uh, possible movements made by vehicles. The weights of these arcs are, are the vehicle travel times and will be represented by parameter tau ij. Within this network, we shall now define some paths and routes. A walking path for a poster is a simple path from a node i in C- minus to a node j in C+, plus, with alternating arcs from the set of service arcs and the set of walking arcs. Such a path will start with the service arc i to m plus i, then it will continue with a walking arc from m plus i to the rival node of a second store, then the service arc of that store, and so on. A vehicle path is a directed path between two nodes in B using only vehicle transportation arcs. Then a service route for a poster is a directed path from the starting depot 0 to the returning depot 2n plus 1, consisting of an alternating sequence of vehicle and walking subpaths that must be connected to each other. A vehicle route is a vehicle path from the start depot 0 to the returning depot 2n plus 1. The duration of any route is just the sum of its R weights. And finally, a service route will be called feasible if it does not exceed a maximum allowed duration, including time for a lunch break that must take place in a certain time window. Service routes and vehicle routes are integrated into daily schedules in the following way. At first, observe that vehicles may pick up and deliver posters to certain stores, while at the same time posters can share the vehicles for the transportation. The vehicle fleet is assumed to be homogeneous, which means that all vehicles have the same capacity Q. Moreover, the poster fleet or the poster team is also assumed to be homogeneous, which in this case means that any poster can visit any store. Now, a daily schedule consists of a set of feasible poster routes and compatible vehicle routes. And compatibility here means that for any vehicle transportation arc AJ, the following two conditions must hold. At first, if IJ is contained in some service route for a poster, then it must be contained in some vehicle route. Well, if a service route for a poster is stating that he or she will be transported from node I to node J by a vehicle, then there must be a vehicle route containing this arc IJ. The second condition takes into account the vehicle capacity by stating that the same arc IJ cannot appear in more than Q service routes. Now we are ready for stating our problem formally. The integrated poster and vehicle routing problem, IPBRP, is the following task. Find a set of daily schedules, at most one for each day in the given time horizon, such that each store is visited once, the number of working days is minimized, so the number of daily schedules is minimized, the number of service routes is minimized, and the number of vehicle routes is also minimized. This is the problem that we are going to address today. Before discussing our model, let me just say something about the INEC instance that motivated this problem. A former student from our math department contacted us a few years ago. She was in charge of the local office of INEC in the city of Guayaquil 
and wanted to start a cooperation project for optimizing the schedules of the posters there. Guayaquil is a city with 2 million inhabitants. Together with Quito, they are the two largest cities in Ecuador. It is a harbor located on the bank of the river Guayas and a few kilometers away from the sea. The instance contains about 800 stores that must be visited within a time window of about two to three weeks. As expected, many stores are concentrated in the city's downtown, but there are also stores that are pretty far away. Some stores are small and require short visit times, while other stores are large and require longer visits. Optimizing the poster and vehicle routes turned out to be a very challenging problem, requiring a combination of integer programming techniques, heuristics, and other ad hoc methods. In the end, we managed to obtain results that improved the plans previously used at INEC. Now let's take a look at the mixed integer programming formulation for our problem. The MIP model is a bit large, so in order to better explain it, I have classified the constraints into four sets. First, there are constraints dealing with the routing of posters. Then there are vehicle routing constraints. In a third set, there are constraints dealing with visit time management and shift duration for the posters. And finally, some constraints specify the requirement that each service route must accommodate a lunch break. Let's start with the poster routing part. Here are the decision variables that we will use. They are all binary variables. At first, there are three sets of variables that are linked to arcs of the network, to posters, and there are two days within the time horizon. Each of these variables takes the value of one if the corresponding arc is, is used on the service schedule of the corresponding poster on the corresponding day. So for instance, xi i plus n es equals to one if poster e visits store i on day s, xij es equals to one if e walks from node i to node j on day s, and similarly, ZIJES equals to 1 if POSTA E is transported by a vehicle from node I to node J on day S. Then, there are two sets of variables here in blue that mark the start and the end of walking paths within service route of posters. So, for instance, BIES equals to 1 if node I is the start of a walking path for POSTA A on day S and similarly, FIS equals to 1 if I is the end of a walking path for E on day S. And finally, there is one binary variable for each day in the time horizon that specifies whether this day S has a daily schedule assigned to it or not. These are the poster routing constraints. They can be classified into five families that are shown here with different colors. Let's start with these purple constraints. They specify that each store must be visited by one poster on exactly one day. To see why, remember that variables xi, i plus n, es take the value of 1 if and, if and only if store i is visited by poster e on day s. Now, for a fixed store i, we take the sum of such variables over all possible days in the time horizon and over all possible posters and we require this sum to be equal to 1. Now, take a minute to think about this. The only way in which a sum of binary variables can be equal to 1 is if exactly one variable takes the value of 1, while all the others take the value of 0. Well, but this is equivalent to requiring that we have to choose a poster E and a day S, such that the store I is visited by E on day S. The blue constraints can be seen as multi-commodity flow demand constraints for walking paths. They force the variable selecting arcs in walking paths and the variables indicating the starts and the ends of walking paths to take compatible values. For instance, let's examine this first set of constraints here. For any node i in C minus, any poster E and any day S, one of three possible cases may take place. First, this variable may take the value of 1. In this case, the only possible way to fulfill the constraint is 
that this variable takes also the value of 1, while each of these variables takes the value of 0. That means we mark node i as the start of a walking path, we select the service arc from i to i plus n, and we do not select in the path any arc entering node i. As a second case, this variable can take the value of 0, and this variable can take the value of 1. In this case, one of these variables must take the value of 1, while the others take the value of 0. This means we do not mark i as the start of a walking path, we select in the path the service arc from i to i plus n, and we also select some arc entering node i. Finally, if these two variables take the value of 0, then each of these variables must also take the value of 0, and in this case, node i is just not part of, the, of a walking path for Polsta e on day s. As an exercise, try to repeat a similar argument for the second set of constraints. The green constraints can be seen as degree constraints of vehicle transportation. They forbid selecting vehicle transportation arcs in a service route for a poster if they do not connect properly to walkings of paths. To see this, let's examine the first set of constraints. Again, for a node i in C minus, a poster E, and a day S, we may have three possible cases. First, assume this variable takes the value of 1. Then node i is the start of a walking path, and the previous set of constraints requires that the service arc from i to i plus n must be selected in the path. So this variable also takes the value of 1 and both cancel. The constraint specifies that at most one of the vehicle transportation arcs entering node i may be selected in the service route. As a second case, Assume node i is not at the start of a walking route, so this variable equals to 0. If the service arc from i to i plus n is still selected in the path, then node i must be an intermediate node of the path. In this case, this variable takes the value of 1. The right-hand side of the inequality evaluates to 0 and selection of any vehicle transportation arc entering node i is forbidden. Finally, assume that both variables take the value of 0, so i is not a part of a, of a walking path for e on a day s. In this case, at most one vehicle transportation arc may still be selected. This is all right since the poster e may be traveling in a vehicle that delivers another poster to node i. A similar reasoning holds for the second set of constraints. Try it. The red set of constraints are multi-commodity flow constraints for vehicle transportation variables. They force variables selecting vehicle transportation arcs and variables indicating the starts and the ends of walking paths to take compatible values. Let's examine the first set of constraints for a given node i in C- minus a given polsta E, and a given day S. Remind that the previous set of constraints requires this sum here to be less than or equal to 1. So, if i is the start of a walking path, then this variable must take the value of 1, and in this case, the constraint states that, that this sum must be equal to 1, and this sum must evaluate to 0. That means we must select exactly one arc from the vehicle transportation arc centering node i, and we may not select any arc leaving node i. This represents the delivery of Polsta e to this node by some vehicle. Now, if node i is not at the start of a walking path, then this variable evaluates to zero, and the constraint just states that this sum and this sum must evaluate to the same value, either one or zero. Thus, node i is either the intermediate node of a vehicle path, or it is not part of such a path. Something similar holds for the second set of constraints. The last family of constraints are degree constraints at the depot. They specify that at most one service route is assigned to each poster on each day. 
and this may only happen if the day is used for the data collection, as otherwise this variable us here takes the value of zero. The second part of the model concerns the routing of vehicles. We use binary decision variables to indicate the selection of vehicle transportation arcs. Namely, for each such an arc ij, and for each vehicle k, and day s, the variable yijks equals to 1 if and only if vehicle k travels through arc ij on day s. We will also make use of some of the variables that were defined for the pollster routing. Variables indicating the transportation of pollsters among vehicle arcs, variables marking the start and the end walking paths, and variables indicating if a day has a schedule assigned to it. The vehicle routing constraints can be arranged into five families. These blue constraints are degree constraints for the vehicle routes. Observe that, as a consequence of the pollster routing constraints, for each node i in C- minus and each day s, this sum must be equal to 1 if i is the start of a walking path for some pollster on day s, or 0 otherwise. Something similar holds for this other sum here. Thus, exactly one of the arcs leaving the customer node i is forced to be selected if i is either the start or the end of some walking path. Together with the next set of constraints, these equations require that vehicle routes must visit exactly the nodes that are extreme of walking paths of a pollster. The green constraints are multi-commodity flow conservation constraints for the vehicles. They state that whenever a vehicle K reaches a customer node I on a day S through some entering arc, then the same vehicle must leave the node I on the same day through another arc. The red constraints are degree constraints at the depot. They specify that at most one route is allowed for each vehicle on each day. Moreover, a route can only be assigned if there is a daily schedule available on that day. Finally, these purple constraints ensure the compatibility of service routes and vehicle routes in a daily schedule. For any vehicle arc IJ, if there is a pollster being transported over that arc on a day S, then there must be a vehicle traveling the same arc on the same day. Moreover, the number of pollsters being transported over a vehicle arc cannot exceed the capacity of the vehicle. As an exercise, try to explain why this sum here on the right hand side must be less than or equal to 1. The third part of the model ensures that service route for pollsters do not exceed the maximum allowed duration. To this end, we make use of non-negative variables to mark the visit times at the nodes. In fact, for each node i in the network, variable vi will indicate the arrival time at the store i in case i belongs to the set c- minus of nodes corresponding to arrival copies of stores, the departure time from store i-n minus in case i belongs to the departure copies of the stores, the duration of the longest service route in case i equals the returning depot and will be set to zero for consistency reasons in case i is the start depot. Furthermore, as lunch breaks within service routes affect the durations, we also need binary variables to indicate when these breaks take place. So for each node i and c minus, for each post e and for each day s, variable w i e s will be equal to 1 if and only if E takes a break after visiting node I on day S. In this case, the departure time from this node must include the time for the, for the break. Finally, we will also use the previously defined arc selection variables for working arcs and for vehicle transportation arcs. These are the constraints for the shift length. The blue constraints specify that the departure time from a store is at least the arrival time at the store plus the duration of the visit plus possibly the duration of a lunch break. 
as we shall see in a few minutes, this sum here equals to 1 if the poster assigned to visiting node i takes the lunch break immediately after the visit, or equals to 0 otherwise. The green constraints account for walking times between consecutive stores in a service route. There is one such constraint for each walking arc. Whenever arc ij is used in a walking path for some poster on some day, then this sum here equals to 1, this term disappears, and we have that the arrival time at store j is at least the departure time from store i plus the walking time from i to j. The constant m here is a sufficiently large positive number such that when the sum equals to 0, then this term minus m makes the right-hand side of the inequality negative and therefore the constraint becomes redundant. Constraints of this sort are known as big M constraints and are a commonly used modeling technique in so-called R-based models of vehicle routing. With a similar approach, red constraints account for vehicle transportation times within vehicle routes. Whenever a vehicle transportation arc, IJ, is used by some vehicle, then this constraint states that the visit time at J is at least the visit time at I, plus the travel time from I to J. Observe that if J equals the return depot to M plus 1, then the arc IJ is the last arc of some route, and B to M plus 1 must be at least as large as the duration of this route. Since every route finishes with an arc ever entering the return depot, it follows that B to M plus 1 is at least as large as the duration of the longest route in the schedule. Finally, we have these two constraints here. The last constraint just sets the value of B0 equal to 0 for consistency reasons, while this constraint implies that the duration of the longest route in the schedule cannot exceed the maximum allowed duration for a route. The last part of our mixed integer program concerns the modeling of lunch breaks for posters. Three families of inequalities are used with its purpose. The first set of inequalities ensure that each lunch break starts within the prescribed time window from T0 to T1. In fact, remind that variable WIES takes the value of 1 if poster E takes a lunch break immediately after visiting the store I on day S. Moreover, as I told you before, we will show that this sum and this sum over here equal to 1 if the poster assigned to visit store I takes a break immediately after the visit or equals to 0 otherwise. You can now check that in the first case, these two constraints require the visit of a store I to end within the time window T0 to T1 while in the second case, the constraints are redundant. Pay attention to the big M technique here. The blue constraints guarantee that service art selection variables and break selection variables take compatible values. Observe the form of this constraint. We have two binary variables related by, by a less than or equal operator. Such a constraint is called an enforcement constraint and models a logical implication. Namely, if the variable on the left takes the value of 1, then the variable on the right must also take the value of 1. In our case, if poster E takes a lunch break immediately after visiting store I on day S, then this store must be scheduled to be visited by E on that day. Finally, these green constraints require that each service route for a poster must include exactly one lunch break. In fact, for each poster E and each day S, this sum on the right hand side takes the value of 1 if E has a service route scheduled on day S and 0 otherwise. In the first case, the constraint requires that poster E takes a break after visiting one of the stores scheduled for that day. Observe that. If we add these constraints over all posters and all days, then on the left hand side we have this sum, while the right hand side equals to 1 due to the first constraints of the model. This shows that each of these sums equals 
either to 1 or 0. Moreover, it equals to 1 if and only if the pole star assigned to store i takes a lunch break immediately after the visit of this store. To finish the description of the model, let's consider its objective function. It is the weighted sum of three terms that measure. The number of working days, that means days with schedules assigned to them, the total number of required vehicle routes, and the total number of required service routes for the pollsters. We are approaching the end of this presentation. In the last few minutes, I want to briefly tell you something about the solution of the model. So let's start with a toy example. We solved a small instance consisting of eight stores and all these parameters shown here. So two posters, two vehicles, three days in the time horizon, service times ranging from two to 34 time units, walking times from two to 28, vehicle transportation times from one half to seven. We set the maximum duration for a shift at uh, 120 the duration of a break at 20, the lunch break had to be taken in the time window from 50 to 90, and the objective coefficients were set to 200, 100, and 40. The corresponding mixed integer programming model has about 3,000 variables and 1,700 constraints. It was solved on a MacBook com Pro computer with 16 gigabyte RAM and using Gurobi as the MIP solver with a time limit set to one hour. We found a solution that requires one vehicle, two posters, and two days. The two daily schedules are depicted here. We use colors to show the assignment of stores to posters. So on the first day, there are these blue stores assigned to one poster, stores 3, 8, 1, 6 and uh, stores 7 and 4 are shown in green, assigned to another pollster. On the second day, we only use one pollster that visits stores 2 and 5. The vehicle routes are shown with dashed arcs here, while walking paths are shown with continuous arcs. For simplicity, we have not depicted service arcs here and show only one node for each store. These yellow dots depict the lunch breaks. So the first post on the first day takes the lunch break immediately after visiting store 3. Even for this small instance, we could not find an optimal solution within an hour of computation time. In fact, the best solution and the best lower bound that we have have a gap of more than 50%. They were both found within the first two minutes of computational time and could not be improved in the remaining time. These are known problems of integer programming models that use the big M technique, as it usually leads to weak linear programming bounds. Well, that was the toy example. Now, what about the real world? instance stemming from INEC. As I told you at the beginning of this talk, we have more than 800 stores to be visited. We have a time horizon consisting of 17 days. We have a team of five posters and we have three vehicles of capacity three. We have discretized the time in the day in units of five minutes. In these units, a lunch break must take eight units and the maximum duration for a poster shift is 84. Well, now you can take a minute and compute the remaining quantities. You will see that we are dealing with a network that has about 3.4 million arcs. And moreover, this leads to a mixed integer programming having 420 million binary variables, at least, and about 50 million, con million constraints. This problem is so large that, of course, it cannot just be fed in a general uh, MIP solver. And what we use is to take a heuristic solution approach that consists of, of three steps. First, we partition the sets of stores in what we call half-daily snapshots. These are sufficiently small sets of stores that can be visited 
in more or less what it takes half the duration of a shift uh, for a poster. Then we route posters and vehicles in each partition without considering the lunch break using our model. And finally, we link the partial solutions into a complete schedule. This last step is equivalent to solving a match problem. So with this approach, we managed to build 30 partitions where each part partition had aggregated duration service times for the, for the stores in that partition, ranging from 90 to 210. Each partition could be solved using two posters and one vehicle. And by matching the partial solutions, we obtain a global schedule that requires 15 days, two posters, and one vehicle. The previous solution used by INEC required 17 days, five posters, and three vehicles. So we managed to improve that. Let's close with some conclusions. We have examined a mixed integer programming model for scheduling the visits of stores and for the integrated routing of posters and vehicles stemming from a practical application. Our model is hard to solve even for small toy instances. And nevertheless, we managed to solve the original practical model using a three-phase solution approach that consisted in partitioning the stores into half-day instances, solving these instances with our model, and finally matching the routes into a complete schedule. As for future work, Currently, we are looking in our groups as, at possible ways to tighten the linear relaxation in order to improve the, the performance of the branch and bound methods. And we are also looking at alternative formulations for the problem. For instance, there are the so-called column-based or route-based uh, models for, for vehicle routing problems, which basically consist in having more or less one decision variable for each uh, possible route. This produces a model with an astronomous large number of variables that anyway can be solved using a technique called, called column generation. Well, that was it. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this talk interesting and I wish you enjoyed the remaining of CO at Work 2020. See you in the Q&A. Bye.